that increase in the amount of soap that you use will serve to remove the dirt of your hands. But there's also an interaction. If you use hot water and soap, you'll be able to remove it even faster still. Okay, so there's a temperature soap interaction in that example. The temperature of the water interacts with the soap to further accelerate the effect that you're trying to quantify. So we see that in this example here as well. Temperature, if we increase temperature, we'll improve my yield by 2% at low substrate. But temperature at high substrate will increase by 8 units. There's the synergism there. It's a synergistic interaction between substrate and temperature. Many real chemical processes will exhibit this. You'll we'll often observe what we call, in this case, a two-factor interaction.
So the fact that these two numbers, these differences are close to each other, then we say there's no interaction. So one way to quantify the interaction is to say, well, how far apart are these two numbers from each other? So recall the 8 was equal to, as written up there, delta y due to temperature. Typically, we write what's on the slide, so I don't emphasize it. Delta y due to temperature at high s. That was equal to 8. And the 2 was equal to the change in y due to temperature at low s. So what we simply do is we take the difference of these, 8 minus 2, and that is the interaction effect. So 8 minus 2 equals 6. But as before, we don't report the full effect, we report half of that. So we just divide by 2 as equal to 3. So if there were no difference between these two jumps over here on the top and bottom, in other words, let's say we had an 8 unit increase at the top and an 8 unit increase at the bottom, the difference, 8 minus 8, is 0, and we've got 0 interaction. So the moment those numbers are different from each other, we don't make the difference. The difference is always done from the higher point to here the high s from high to low. We always calculate the difference in that order. So in this situation, it's 8 minus 2, the difference of 6 units. We don't report the full difference, we report half of it, so we report it 3. Now you can also look down at the other way around. Here I've looked at the effect of temperature at high and low substance. But I could have also looked at substrate at high and low temperature. So I'd say that these interactions are symmetrical. I won't rewrite it yet. It's here up in the slide view. Let's take a look at S, the change in S at high temperature. In other words, I'm looking at the change in S at high temperature refers to this jump, and the change in temperature in S due to at low temperature. That's a 10 unit change and a 4 unit change. The difference between 10 and 4 is 6, half of 6 is 3. You always get the same number. It doesn't matter which way around you look at it, whether it's temperature substrate interaction or substrate temperature, you'll always get the same result. And you can prove that to yourself. It's just based on the fact that it's a linear system. The fact that it's a positive number indicates to me that the effect of temperature and substrate is further enhanced, further increases the effect on yield when they're both positive. Now, we're going to, you're going to understand why that, why that makes sense in a minute. So this tells you the fact that it's a plus 3 over there. It tells you that if you were to work at high temperature and high substrate, you get an additional 3 units of improvement in yield because you have to choose the right combination so that they interact in a way that further enhances your system. Now, many of you have used heard the word interaction with in drugs. So you may have a family member that takes drugs and they take two different types of drugs, maybe one for heart disease and another one for diabetes. You've often heard about drugs interacting. And it's exactly the same concept here. Drugs that interact will either counteract the effect of the other drug that they're taking, or it may enhance the effect of the other drug even more. Both are actually undesirable in terms of drugs. Like you don't want to enhance the effect of one drug more than it should be, nor do you want to diminish the effect of the drug due to another drug that you're taking. So drug-drug interaction pairs are well documented and studied, but it's exactly the same principle. Either you can interact to enhance something, and sometimes you can even interact in a way that counteracts what you had intended. Okay, so we'll, we have to be aware of this later on. When we want to improve our processes, we should choose the combination of settings that leads to an improvement. So this is, this is an important point, and we're going to quantify this numerically. Okay, so 
so three was the value in this case. Okay. You, you'll always get the t interaction of s, and the s interaction of t will be the same value. Okay, so in another system, t and s might interact, you'll get a minus 4 over there. But you'll get a minus 4 whether you consider t interacting with s, or whether you consider s interacting with t. Okay, it's always a symmetric. Is equal to 
to the middle value between low and high. So it's the low level plus the high level divided by 2. So for temperature, that would be 338 to plus 354 divided by 2. So it's halfway between the low value and the high level. That corresponds to 346. The range in this case is the difference between them, obviously. So it's the range, in this case, refers to the high level minus the low level. And range divided by 2 then is that. Okay, so the center point is low plus high divided by 2. The range is high minus low. So high minus low. Temperature, beta T, the 
defective substrate beta S. And then this is the new term that we're going to add in. We're going to estimate a term here that quantifies this, the interaction between the temperature and the substrate. So we're going to have to estimate four parameters, P0, Vt, Vs, Vts, four parameters, in other words, four unknowns, we've got four data points from our four experiments, we're going to have zero degrees of freedom left confidence. Four unknowns, four data points. So that's the statistical model I would like to build that's going to represent my my four experimental data points. So let's take a look at how we do that. Well, I'll develop the, the results for the first row. So here, this is the one, one thing we forgot to do is after our operators have done and done the experiments for us, they go to play the data, y1, y2, y3, y4, whatever the y represents, whatever your outcome there is. So if you're doing this, your DOE project at home, you're perhaps going plots, y1, 2, 3, and 4 might represent the height of the plot. Or if you're uh, popping popcorn, y1, 2, 3, and 4 might represent the number of unpopped kernels. So it's your response variable. So if we're going to take our, our model then and set it up as a matrix for for the first observation, then we've got y1 is equal to my e naught intercept, so that's the first entry in the x matrix, plus vt times xt. Well, vt is the effect of temperature, that's the slope coefficient. xt represents the value of temperature itself. And the value of temperature that I ran this experiment was at the low level of temperature, 338 Kelvin. But I'm not going to put 338 into that matrix at the T minus position. I'm going to put in the coded value of the VS represents the effect of substrate. Concentration is slow when you substrate. So the S minus goes in there. Because we ran that first experiment at low substrate as well. And then the interaction is always represented as the product of the two. Temperature, X, T. Times XS will estimate the slope coefficient for VTS that represents the interaction. Okay, so that's the first row assembled. I can go repeat that. The second row, the third row, the fourth row. And what you'll notice is that essentially that matrix X really is just a copy and paste of the standard table. So all the the development we did to get this section here in blue from the standard table, that actually forms the bulk, the bulk of the X matrix. The X matrix will always have the first column of ones, but then the second column is literally to take this value, this column from the standard table to the temperature, and you paste it in over there. So in your Excel spreadsheet, you would simply copy in those four entries correspond to minus, plus, minus, plus from the temperature curve. This third column represents the effect of substrate, minus, minus, plus, plus. It's this column over there. And then the final column corresponds to the product of temperature and substrate. So take minus, minus over here, and get your plus one, minus one time. Minus my, uh, so plus one times minus one gives you minus one. Minus times plus is minus, and plus times plus is plus one. So this is the T S interaction. And that forms the final column in the S matrix.
before I show, uh, we go to the least squares model, let's take a look at what this least squares model is. It's, remember, the least squares model being more than two variables, sorry, more than one variable represents the plane. Here we have a plane with one variable x1 in the horizontal direction, in and out of the board we have x2, our second variable. And so what we've done is essentially calculating this least squares model by simply placing those four points and putting the plane right through it. And so that's in crude terms one way that you can visualize what this plane, what this least squares model is doing. If we're trying to estimate the least squares model, there's uh, the first set of equations up there from the, from the earlier slide. This next equation block shows you the x matrix over there. As, as I mentioned, we copy and paste our standard order columns. There's the temperature column, the third column represents the substrate, and the final column represents the interaction between the two. So when you now have my x matrix, I now have my y vector. Those are the four results that I got from my lab analysis. And we can go calculate x transpose x and x transpose y. What you'll notice with this special matrix, x transpose x, you can prove this to yourself in MATLAB or in R. Um, the R tutorial shows you how to calculate the matrix multiplications. X transpose x has a very interesting structure that there's a pause on the diagonal and zero to the How do we interpret that? What does that mean? no-brainer to calculate. Like you don't actually have to go calculate x transpose x. 
uh, manually, you can simply tell that it's going to be pause in the diagonal and zeros everywhere else because of the fact that you've got four rows and these are four columns of independent. The next important vector to calculate the vector product is x transpose y. X transpose y then is the variance, covariance of the x variable with the y. So what this says is, let's take a look and perhaps write up my x transpose matrix. So you've got the x matrix in your notes. I'll just quickly write up x transpose over here. We'll only do this once and then. So x transpose in this case will have ones, four ones over there, then will be minus one, plus one. Minus one, plus one, minus one, minus one, plus one, plus one, and then the last row of the x transpose will be plus one, minus one, minus one, plus one. X transpose y, let's put our y values up as well. They were 69, 60. Interpreted identically to how we interpret the slope coefficients in the past. Bt 
here of minus 5 says changing temperature by 1 unit will lead to a minus 5 unit change in the y variable. So Xt going up by 1 unit in temperature will result in a drop of 5 units in yield. But when we looked at multiple linear regression, we said holding everything else constant. Okay. So it's a change in normalized temperature by one unit, holding everything else constant. In this case, in DOEs, I don't actually have to add on the part holding everything else constant. The reason why I don't have to do that is because, in fact, every variable is temperature has been changed and will lead to reduction in minus 5 degrees. And the slope coefficient for Es equal to minus 3 says increasing substrate, the coded unit of substrate by 1 unit will result in a minus 3 decrease in the yield of Y. Okay, so it's very important to recognize that these slope coefficients are in front of this variable xt for the, the, the slope coefficient bt, I should say, is in front of xt over there. It's very important to recognize that that xt is a coded variable. xt is either a minus 1 or a plus 1. So, just visualize that. Okay, so we said that bt is equal to minus 5. And that corresponds to a change in coded units. So in coded units, we ran from minus 1 to plus 1. This was T low. This was T high. And the value of the low temperature was 338 Kelvin. Yeah, 
where we changed our temperature from 338 to 350 Kelvin. We know it was a 16 Kelvin change. We jumped here on the lower level by nine units. At the higher level of substrate, we jumped by 11 units. So we had 11 unit change. We said that on average is a minus 10 percent drop per 16 Kelvin change. But I told you, let's report half of it. Let's not report the full amount. So I said, let's report that as a minus 5 percent change per 8 Kelvin. And now you can probably see why, I, why we did that. This minus 5 over here corresponds exactly to the minus 5 from the least squared. That minus 3 over there, we were considering the substrates effect, corresponds exactly to the minus 3 we see from the least squares model over there. Yes, How do we uh, use the minus 0.5 XTXS? Okay, how do we use the minus 0.5 XTXS? In this context, what you take from the fact that minus 0.5 is relatively small compared to the, the minus 3 and the minus 5, indicating that the system has little interaction. Now let's, let's go back, in fact that's a great question, if we go back to the system with high interaction, I'd like you to go home and prove to yourself, I'm not going to review the calculations yet, but you should be able to prove to yourself in two, three minutes and that's the least squares model for the system with high interaction. Calculate the slope, coefficients, or the XT, XS, and calculate the interaction for XT and XS. And you'll get a slope coefficient for the interaction at one and a half minutes. That's a substantial number relative to two and a half and three and a half minutes. Indicating that the interaction here is significant. Thank you. 